Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jelly. This is Jelly's Corner. This is my review for the Real Housewives of the Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season three, episode thirteen. Yes, I'm wearing a scarf. It's four a.m. Get over it. Um, tonight's lipstick is Fenty Beauty, the stunning lip paints. And let's get into this review so that Mama can go to bed, honey. Um, so Karen and Candace. Karen and Candace are meeting up. And they're at a spa getting their feet ate by them damn fish. I think that is so weird. I would never want to do that because it would just kind of creep me the hell out. I was like, oh my God. And then here comes Kendall. I say, Karen is really like hanging out with Kendall. Okay, Karen, like, you know, it is what it is. She says, you know, for a while, I kind of held off on my friendship with Kendall out of respect for Giselle. However... Um, Giselle been kind of acting funny and stinking dang dang recently, so, you know what I'm saying, all best are off. So, excuse me, what I found funny about that is, remember Karen said, and I think the last two episodes, that she's known, um, that she's known Kendall longer than she's known Giselle. So, for this episode, for you to say, I had not been trying to be, I had been holding off my friendship with Kendall out of respect for Giselle. You then can't then say, but I've known Kendall longer. Because it's a contradiction, which proves to me Karen's a goddamn liar. Because you, you, if I've known you longer, I'm not going to hold off my friendship with you for someone I haven't known that long. Or that I have not long, known as long. It doesn't make any sense. Um, it was bullshit by the pound, if you ask me. So, she then says, you know what I'm saying, because Kendall is there at the little spot or whatever. And she's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I have been trying to do whatever with Giselle, but she's been acting really stank dang dank right now. She then says, Giselle has been trying to... <laughs> trying to think how she, she basically said, Giselle been fucking me up the ass with no Vaseline. And you know what I'm saying? So all bets are off. I said, she said it, not me. She said she been sticking it up my butt with no Vaseline. And so all bets are off. I said, well, Karen, you up and doing anal, girl? Lord Jesus. Kendall then says, why can't she just be a bitch? I said, Kendall, you ain't girl. I'm really wondering what is the issue between Kendall and Giselle. Because, again, Kendall and Sherman were divorced for years before Giselle started dating him. So, I'm confused as to why Kendall would call Giselle a bitch. Was it beef beforehand? I'm not sure. Anyway, Karen then says, well, no, nah, I'm going to wait to judge to see what it is because she has usually apologized for stuff, so I don't know what's going on. So at that point in time, Karen then asked Candace, what was up between your husband at that benefit when y'all was been arguing? So Candace said, well, yeah, he called me a, a diva princess, and that's a button for me, and so it kind of made me mad. And Kendall then says, well, I haven't known you for that long, but you know what I'm saying? That doesn't seem like it's far-fetched. Like, that seems pretty accurate. And I was like, well, bitch, it's true. But, I mean, Kendall is really trying to get her foot in the door to be a goddamn castmate. And so, at that point in time, uh, Candace then said, yeah. And then after that, you know what I'm saying? I sent him a text. And I said, this, this, and this about him and his father. Honey, Karen, Karen said, girl, I would have left you. If I was Chris, I would have left you because you can't be doing something like that. She's like, you know, you can't get married to um she said no she said don't get married if you feel like you have to hurt each other to communicate like that not the way to go and i said well karen that's absolutely true um again what um candace said to that man so something like to the fact of you are low down whatever whatever like your father and i'm like again i would have left you with that i would have left you that day okay i would have moved out Pack my bags and said, bitch, fuck you. Because it was she said was harsh. It was harsh. It was so bad. So, you know, at that point in time, Candace then says, like, you know, I, at her confession, she says, you know, I never thought I would be with a man, a white man who was divorced with a, a few kids. Like, I didn't think that would be my life. So, I sacrificed 
what I saw for myself. So I feel like, you know what I'm saying, he should reciprocate that and sacrifice too. And I said, well, bitch, sacrificing does not mean you can be an asshole to him and he has to take it. Or that you can be a goddamn petty, petty princess, bitch, and he don't call you on it. If you got damn petty, petty princess, your husband is the one person who should call you on it. Okay? Let's call the girl. She's stupid. I said, bitch, what? I sacrificed for you because you divorced and you and, and you got some kids. You no, you made a decision. He didn't force you to be with him at all. And if he did, blink twice, bitch. Otherwise, sh- it's your decision to be with that man. So to say he should reciprocate that and make sacrifices to me, I'm like, but what are you asking him to sacrifice? Because again, if you're being a bitch, if you're being a princess and being a petty petty diva as your husband, he should check you. The same way, if he been a goddamn asshole or petty petty princess too, you can check him. But you, what he said to you, was really low on a totem pole of insults. Your reply to him was was times a hundred. Like you went over, 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 over. What you said to Chris is what you say to your ex who you just found out cheated on you and got someone pregnant and um infected you with gonorrhea. Th- that's that's you say that. That's the kind of deception you want to like go off on someone from. All he did was call you goddamn princess and a spoiler because you are a bitch. You really, really are. So I'm like, Candace, Candace is gonna have so much explaining to do at the reunion. I mean, she is and a girl. Bye. Anyway, we see Monique and and Chris on a little date or whatever at a wine bar. I'm like, girl. Okay. Um, she's showing him her logo for her little, the, the Not For Lazy Moms website or whatever. I don't know if it's a website or a podcast or what it is. I didn't like the logo. I felt like Monique is extra at all times. And I felt like her logo was boring. Like, I feel like moms are superheroes. Like, they're they're fantastic. So, I felt like her the design was just so basic and, like, blah. I was surprised it wasn't more fancy. I'm like, I'm surprised the mother didn't look more superhero ish and not cartoonish but just like just more special i just i it was just too basic for me anyway um she brings up how her and sharice have not spoken for a while and she's not sure what's going on oh my god it's a net it's a net that's been driving me crazy all day and i can't kill it and it keeps fucking with me because the lights are on so it's attracted to light and it keeps flying to me and it's oh my god driving me crazy Anyway, never put plants in your house. I hate plants. Now she learned. She learned that. Anyway, she's saying how you know she has not. She does not know what was the issue and why Sharice has not um, came back and talked to her. Girl, we know why, but you don't. You'll find out later. Um, she then Chris then says, "Your birthday, your birthday coming up. So, um, what do you want besides that Lamborghini? Because oh, can I kill it? Can I get it? No. Oh my God." Um, <laughs> this is gonna be a video about a goddamn net, but whatever. Um, he then said, like, you won't get what you want, that big gift that you wanted. She wanted a Lamborghini. I said, bitch, for what? For what, girl? I said, girl, you didn't crash one little nice car. You ain't getting the second one. Okay, you're gonna get that same car back that you had before. You don't get on damn Lambo. You can't drive that one. No. Mm, so she has down somewhere. But he tells her, like, look, because you've been having, like, you know, a lot of things going on or whatever, you've been stressed out. How about. I'll keep the kids, you know what I'm saying, you go max and relax, pick a place to go, I'm going to pay for the trip, you know what I'm saying, have a whole little vacation or whatever. Oh my God, I'm so happy, oh yeah. And then they want to travel a new baby that night. But we know that she's currently pregnant now, so uh, they would travel a baby and they got one. Um, Ashley, Ashley wants to have an open mic night at her restaurants. And I'm like, okay girl, okay. Um, she says when she was competing in pageants that she would like sing as her talent. Um, but did she ever win? I need to figure out if she ever won anything because a little later on we're going to talk about that. Anyway, she brings up how her and her brother are going to perform a song that they prepared and that we dedicated to her husband. She said how, you know, because me and Michael have these issues and how he does not really want to have kids with me right now. I feel like I can be kind of take that step forward to fix whatever's wrong and maybe he can want kids and i said girl bye because simply you can't make a man want kids um and we all are un- we all are aware he don't want kids with you period he just does not want children he wants a trophy wife so i mean i feel like she 
because she's like, I don't want to just throw away the marriage. So, you know what I'm saying? I want to try to fix it and kind of see if we can get past this. And he can kind of, you know, want kids later. Girl, my eye itching. You stupid. Uh, and that's it. We then see Monique and she planning a trip. She's going to plan a trip to France. She said her name was, was French. And I said, is it? Is it really? Um, but she wants to plan a trip to France for her 34th birthday. And she wants all the ladies to come. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Mary and Joseph. So she's inviting Karen, Robin, Cherise, Ashley, Candace, and even Giselle. And, you know, I'm happy she is not inviting Kendall. I, for a second, thought, damn, what if she's invite, what if she invites Kendall saying, like, she's my friend. I'm happy she did not say her name. Well, her husband then said, oh, you going to invite Giselle? She says, well, yeah, I feel like if her, and, if her and Robin wants to be petty and childish or whatever and be arguing, that's on them. But I'm going to still extend this olive branch to invite them to, to celebrate with me. But I'm like, girl, you making the invitations as an arts and craft project to kids. Like, she had, like, cut all the pieces. It was a real-life arts and craft. My kid is 10 and has to create an invitation to their birthday party. And the kids made it. I mean, she had glue sticks in it. I'm like, bitch, glue sticks? You was 34 years old. Glue sticks? If you don't order some kind of girl back. I said, this is the greatest shit ever. Anyway, and then she did not even deliver the invitation herself. You made arts and craft invitations and then then still did not deliver it yourself or like just mill it off she had a mind deliver it and you know that's supposed to be french little people and all that shit so she had a mime go to we seen it go to robin's house first and robin kept laughing she's like what the f-? she was like what is this she was confused and so the mind had to come outside and had like a little suitcase or whatever and when it hit play it was a recording in French saying we're going to France or whatever. And she's like, I don't, I speak Spanish. I don't, I don't speak French. So he then gave her the invite and it was saying, okay, yeah, you know, pack your Louis luggage and come to France or whatever. She's like, why well, don't you invite me? I haven't. And it was funny because she said to the mom, like, I haven't talked to her in days. As if he was going to say something like, well, I don't, okay. But she, t- <laughs> it was, I'm like, the mom ain't going to respond to you, girl, because he don't know anything. So from there, we see Karen and Giselle meet up. And, you know what I'm saying, it was a back and forth conversation between them where Karen was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to listen to you. And then Giselle, like, you know what I'm saying, I don't know, are you mad at me? Um, she brings up, like, okay, let's talk about Robin's event. Karen don't want to talk about that. Karen, like, I'll talk to Robin about her event, like, they ain't got nothing to do with you. You know, you've done enough um, whack attacks on your own. She's like, whack attacks? Whack attacks? What are you talking about? Um, she goes on to say, you know, at my press conference with the whole little shirt or whatever. Then at my charity event, you came and screaming, uh, saying how you had to talk to me right now. And I'm like, well, she wasn't screaming. I mean, she was pretty calm, cool, and collected. Honestly, she was. She wasn't loud. It was a scene, but it wasn't a loud scene. So I'm like, you know, it was what it was. Um, Giselle, like, really? Like, this is kind of crazy, whatever. Um, but you lied on me and said I was at your event being loud. It was a petty... This dinner is petty, okay? It was very, very, very petty. At this point in time, she said, you know, you was at my event acting like a clown. And then Giselle saw the mime, and she said, no, that's a clown. I'm not, whatever. But Karen don't see the mime because the mime is walking up from from behind. So she doesn't see it. She's like, no, that's a clown. And then Giselle laughing. She's like, it's really a mime walking up, like, pointing to us or whatever. They didn't know who the mime was. And... She's like, oh, no, go ahead. Then this, this is the thing. Go ahead. So they're thinking it's just a, a person walking down the street who wants some camera time. So they're trying to ignore him. But he's trying to get their attention because, again, he's there to, to deliver the invitation to um, Monique's thing or whatever. So I'm like, it's kind of crazy. So at that point in time, just like, you know, oh, you don't think you did anything wrong. Um, you keep lying on me or whatever. It's kind of crazy. At this point, I'm over them both. It's a dumb conversation. I feel like they both done wrong. They both are shady bitches. They both have done bad things to the other one. So, neither one of them can come. No one can be like, well, you worse than me or I'm worse than you. Y'all both bad. Y'all both have y'all moments. Get the fuck over it. Y'all are frenemies. It is what it is. Um, But, when Giselle then said, you know what I'm saying? She said, you know, all of a sudden, Kendall is in photos hanging around with ladies in the cast. She said my circle, what she meant by my circle was the people in the cast. I do feel like that is weird that 
the guy who I was dating, y'all all of a sudden, or she is all of a sudden hanging out with people I work with on the show. That is weird as fuck to me, and I completely agree. And she says, I just don't get it. I don't get how that's happening. You know, Karen, like, you know what I'm saying? You so insecure about her. Um, you shouldn't be dating anyone's ex-husband. I said, no, wait a minute, Karen. For you to tell someone you should not date anyone's ex-husband is an oxymoron comment because when you, you Ray, you were someone's ex-wife. So should Ray have not met, married you? You can't say to someone you should not date someone's ex-husband. That means if you get married and get divorced, you shouldn't have anybody else. And you are someone's other wife. You were not Ray's first wife. And Ray wasn't your first husband. So, girl, your statement was stupid. And, again, Karen be saying to her ass and don't get it. I'm like, that's the dumbest. She actually said you should not be dating anyone's ex-husband. You know how many people are divorced? And then Giselle said, I'm going to date more people's ex-husbands. Because a lot of people are divorced. So, I might have to date someone's ex-husband, bitch. And you can't say that I should not do that. I'm like, you sound stupid. It's so, so stupid. Um, and then the man came back. And they wasn't for it. He even walked over the fence. And they got, like, security. Security. But I think they would have thought once security did not do anything, it must be a part of something. But they both was like, nah, mm -mm. They got up and they left. They're like, it's we. They're like, no, sir. You know what I'm saying? Have a seat. Leave us be. No, 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 no. And it was, you know, it was over. But, again, the whole scene, to me, between Karen and Jay was stupid. Except her saying, you know, y'all are all of a sudden hanging out with her, taking photos with her, and, and, and y'all the cast. It's some bullshit. That part I do agree with. We see Candace and Chris go to his lawyer friend, okay, to discuss a prenup. And I said to myself, why are they both going to his lawyer friend? When you get a prenup, you get your own lawyer, and he gets his own lawyer. I said, if, if she going to do a, one prenup for both of y'all, you're you going to get fucked, okay? I was I was completely confused. Anyway, they're just going to her to get some advice on the prenup. She gave him some basic information. Like, you know, you have to have your own lawyers, for one, and you both have to come into the, the prenup knowing what you want to keep for yourself and what your assets are um, and what you want to keep if you do get divorced. So, um, Candace mentions her business with her mom um, and then saying how she knows... Um, she, you know, she said, you know, I know since the argument we had, things can get messy. So I do think now we have to get a prenup. I said, but the killing part about it is Chris should be worried about you. You should be worried about Chris. He, you seem vindictive, petty. Um, you want to retaliate against people. I felt like if you and Chris get beefed out, you will be the one that would say, you know what? I want to take you to court for all of your money. I want to get all, because you seem pay like that. Like, that response to him by his daddy, it makes people look at you in a different light. So, I'm like, he should really be, you know, protecting his stuff. So, he brings up how he just has his, you know, the the, the, the barbecue business, the restaurant or whatever. Um, And Candace then says, like, they say, okay, well, you, know, you can't discuss child support in, in a prenup, you, you, but you can talk about alimony. She says, I feel like if you cheat on me, if you go out here and get like a little, a little sad piece or whatever, and y'all are here sad piecing, um, I want some money. And I agree. If someone cheat, that's a reason for alimony. Um, I can't argue with that. But again, Candace can't make it seem as if things are going to get messy and he going to be the one, you know what I'm saying, being petty. Because she's a petty bitch if I ever seen one. Well, that, that text she sent to him, well, she would never live that shit down this season. She just would not do that. Um, but the lawyer do say, like, you know, y'all have to get your own lawyers. That y'all can't have the same lawyer. Um, so that was all that little scene was with some talking about it. We see Monique and, Sh and Sharice meet up real quickly. Um, I feel like Monique played, that, played that, that scene. Because Sharice gave her reasons as to why they hadn't really cooking or whatever. Saying, like, I feel like you taking advantage of me and using my friends um, for your game. And Monique started crying. Oh, my God, I'm so sad. I can't believe that. I'm hurt, you know, that hurt my feelings, you know what I'm saying? Um, you're the only one person I care about, and you know what I'm saying? I would argue with them other ladies all day, but, you know, not you. I thought you were, maybe, she said, I thought maybe because you were back friends with Giselle and Robin, you didn't need me anymore, and she crying. So I'm like, I can't stand that friend when you go talk to them for a real issue. They cry, and you can't really go any further with how you feel. Because you then have to console said friend who's crying, and I feel like as adults, you can't just start crying off. Like let's have a, let's let's talk about it first. Like what you crying for? What you crying for? 
to be crying to kind of basically disarm me, and I I have to then be sensitive to your feelings. And I feel like that's what Monique did. She felt like she knew what Sharice meant, and she said, "You know what I'm saying? To let let me let me disarm her, let me start crying, and then she can't bring up more stuff that I've done as far as me taking friends of hers and kind of making them mine." If I start crying, she'll feel bad, and we'll be fine. And she and, and that's what happened. So it was what it was. Anyway, at that moment, um, Giselle texts her. Cause well, no, I take it back. Um, Cherie said it's okay, it's fine. Um, I maybe should have voiced my frustration sooner than now, but we'll be okay. And at that point, Giselle was texting Monique, and they said, "How you know what I'm saying?" I got your invitation, you know what I'm saying? Considering the fact that you did not come, you did not speak to me at the event in D.C., that you went out your way to avoid me at the Black Caucus in D.C., I don't know why you would think I would fly to France um, with you, so that's not going to happen. I declined, and so does Robin. And, I mean, I feel like, I don't know what people going to say, but that's how we say they did, you know, the dynamic duo with them, them two people or whatever. I feel the exact same way. We don't. I don't rock with you. And if I don't rock with you, then we can't hang out in D.C. And on our own turf. Why would I want to fly to France to hang out with you? And it's her birthday trip. We're not cool like that. And I'm the firm believer in you hang out with who you get along with. And if we have to be around each other in D.C. in our own town because someone else is having an event, I get that. But I'm not flying across the country to hang out with you because we don't get along. And not only that, we ain't chit-chatted about the whole issues or whatever. And so I kind of got it. I understood it, I mean. So at that point in time, we see Ashley at the restaurant with her open mic night. And all the ladies are there. Um, Robin and Giselle, Karen, and Monique was all there. So we see Giselle tell the ladies how her and Robin declined um, Monique's invitation. And she says, like, look, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't any point in us going. Um, so it was what it was. We then see Karen get there. And her and Robin have a, little, a quick little conversation. Honey, Robin said, look, you, you know, was a liar. You laughed to me. You know, you acted as if you did not say yes to my event. You acted as if you did not RSVP to my event. You kept lying, saying that you didn't say yes to Siri said yes. Like, so my thing is, was you had no reason to lie about if you did or did not RSVP. That was just kind of stupid. But I thought the whole conversation was stupid. We know Karen lied. Like, that's clear. We know she's a liar. So, if your friend is a liar and you know it, then you just kind of don't even, you just don't care. You be like, girl, bye, whatever. So, we see that whole thing. We then also see Monique say, hey, Giselle, can we talk real quick? Giselle was like, um, I mean, I guess so. (laughs) I would say, you know what, I don't don't even want to talk to you right now. I would say no. So, they go sit at a different little point or whatever. So they're talking. And you know what I'm saying? She's like, look, I did not talk to you at the, the little black caucus thing because I did not want to cause any drama. Plus, you didn't invite me to your thing. So I just didn't do that. So I just, you know, avoided it or whatever. But I did um, invite you to the, my birthday trip. Um, you see, I'm like, look, you could have been an adult. And just came over, said hello, and left. She said, however, but you avoided me. So clearly, we're not friends. I agree on that, but I also agree with it ain't a, it ain't a big issue. Girl, who the fuck cares? Um, y'all not friends, so that's not surprising. So just uh, get over yourself. Um, don't try to make an issue an issue that's not really an issue. So, um, but she then said, you know, so we ain't friends, so why invite me to your birthday trip? Now that part, I do agree. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. So, <laughs> Monique was like, you know, well, fine, don't come, but I invited everyone hoping that we could all be able to have peace and kind of get along and kind of get over things like we did on our last little trip or whatever. It was kind of cool and we all kind of, you know, was able to um, have, a, have it be cool. So, Giselle then says, well, you know, I'll think about it. Okay, fine. Um, back at the table, Monique as Robin. You know, hey, do you want to come? I was trying to squash all this beef or whatever. Um, I want y'all to get to know the real me and not the kind of angry me that y'all think y'all only see. And I feel like this would be a perfect thing to have us all start over and, you know what I'm saying, mend these fences. Honey, <laughs> um, Robin looked at G- Giselle and said, Giselle, are we going? Now, see, when she did that, I said, girl, 
they're going to dog your ass out for that. Because why did you have to ask Giselle if y'all were going? I think the better way to say it was, hey, Giselle, I'll go if you go. Because you're my person. That I don't mind. Because sometimes when you do go on a trip with someone who you don't really who you don't really rock with, you do want to have your per you want to have your person with you. And you my person, so if you going, I'm going. But my thing is the way she asked the question was like give me give me permission to say that we're going. It's I, I would have just worded it differently. Okay, this did not seem as if I need Giselle's permission to go and not me saying we is thing one and thing two. Okay, you my person, I'm your person. And if you go, I go. And if I go, you go. Point blank, period. And Giselle said, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to go. We're going we gonna to rock together. And then whatever else happens, happens. Okay, girl, have fun. Um, the last thing that we see is Michael makes it back in time. He was gone to a um, work trip or whatever. And so he came back like just in time to be there. What I laughed at was she said, you're late getting here. You were supposed to be here at 9 o'clock. It's 9.30. Bitch, it's 30 minutes. It's okay. It's fine. Um, so, this little open mic night or whatever, her and her brother did this, her, her, her brother did this extra cheesy song. Um, but before that, the mama was there. Now, before she was in high, she did not know she was going to invite her mother because of the whole issues. So, when in the beginning, when she said, well, you know, Michael is at a work event. Like, he might not, I don't know if he's going to make it back or not. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's why her mom was there. So Michael came in. I'm like, okay, that's weird because again, the mama and Michael kind of like not even rocking with each other, and they was like sitting next to each other, but it was like a weird vibe. Um, but she's like, I want my baby go up there and do good. I said, Jesus Christ, honey, her her brother saying this weird, cheesy song that was cute. It was cute and cheesy. I mean, clearly she not a singer. Okay, she's she's. It's, she is the kind of person where, you know, when you are singing the song to your man, it was that kind of cute. When you can't really sing, but you can hold a note. Is what she did. She can hold a note, but she can't sing. And it was a little bit off key at points in time, but it was so cheesy but cute because, again, it's a woman singing to her man. And I was like, okay. I mean, he liked it. It was what it was. But, I mean, at the end of the day, he don't want to look at that baby. And he don't want to be with you. He don't want to be with nobody so girl move the fuck on and that's how the episode went off so put your comments below let me know what you thought don't forget to like this video to subscribe to my channel and then also hit that, that little notification bell so that when i do post a video you will know i am Jaylee. this is Jaylee's corner peace